Salakaya Chaksu Unmilitam Yenatas Mai Shri Gurveda Maha Ma Um Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pustai Bhutale Shri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Iti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gorvani Pacharine Nirvishesa Sunyavari Paschat Yari Satarine Panchakalpa Tarubhischa Kripa Sindhu Vedicha Patitanam Bhavane Vyo Vaishnave Vyo Namaha Namaha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Kadahar Siva Siddhi Gaur Bhaktivinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. <laughs> when Bande <coughs> Si Krishna Chaitanya Pradmuktyanando Sano Dido Kurodaya Pushpanvanto Chitta Sando Tamo Mudo Ajanu Lambita Bujo Kamakanakana Dado Sankir Tanai Papita Ro Kamalaya Taxo Vishwam Baro Dwijabaro Yuga Dharma Falo Vande Chigatriya Karo Karuna Vataro Anchitadva Makam Krishnam Bhaktarupa Swarupakam, Bhakti Avatar Bhakti Kyam, Namami Bhakti Shakti Kam. Sri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Ki Jai. So we are only a, less than a week before the appearance day of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And for the Gaudiya Vaishnavas, and we are following in the footsteps of that line, we are. Gaudiya Vaishnavas, <clears throat> our Sampradaya, or our line of disciplic succession, is coming from Lord Brahma all the way down to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to the six Goswamis, six Goswamis, <clears throat> Vishwanath Charkavarti Thakur, Balave Vid Vidya Bhushan, and then down to uh, Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj, and then uh, Bhakti Vinod Thakur, Gorkishore Das Babaji Maharaj, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, and then to His Divine Grace, Founder Acharya, Srila Prabhupada, <clears throat> and then here we are in this line of disciplic succession. We are the Gaudiya, Madhva Gaudiya. Vaishnav disciplic succession. Madhvacharya is also a key principle in our Sampradaya also. And of course, uh, tomorrow, I believe it is, or Thursday, maybe it's Thursday, yeah, is the uh, disappearance day of Madhavendra Puri, one of the key acharyas in the, in the, uh, mm, in the feature of bringing about Lord Chaitanya's appearance into the world, he is Lord Chaitanya's Param Guru, his, we might call it grandfather guru, guru, the uh, guru of his guru. So that is our line. So we are Gaudiya Vaishnavas. And so for us, <clears throat> uh, the new year <clears throat> is in five days. Officially, according to our religious tradition, spiritual heritage, we celebrate our new year on Gaur Purnima, <laughs> the appearance day of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. <clears throat> and it's always according to the lunar calendar. <clears throat> um, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, after he returned from Gaya and meeting his uh, eternal spiritual master, Srila Ishwara Puri, the Lord had a major transformation in his presentation of his mission. Before he left for Gaya, he was Nimai Pandit, 
the scholar, um, the scholar of Nayak, logic, reasoning, literature. And uh, he was teaching based on the principles of devotion, but it was general subject matters. After he came back and had been blessed after meeting Ishwara Puri, he was transformed and then he just began to have kirtan regularly. And uh, he started where the devotees were going out every day and doing kirtan. But then at one point, the Lord said to his followers, <clears throat> every night we are spending so many time, so many hours just sleeping. You know, during the day we're having kirtan, so we should also do kirtan in the evening. <clears throat> but this will be special. <clears throat> Excuse me. This will be only for those devotees who are on the most uh, highest platform of love of God. And it will have it at the house of Srivas Gakur. So the Lord began this program of worshiping the Lord and his mood as the devotee of the Lord in Kirtan in the house of Srivas Thakur. And a lot of the people in the area, many of them wanted to come, but they were restricted from coming. Some could understand that they weren't qualified to, be, to come and others became very inimical and critical and start accusing the devotees of having illicit activities behind the doors and not allowing for them to come in because they're decent people. So uh, this was the criticism. But Lord Chaitanya wanted to have a more intimate mood of kirtan with his more confidential devotees who were more like Advaita Charya, Mukunda, like that, Sila Haridas. And so it was normally Mukunda who would begin the kirtan and then the Lord would begin his dancing. And the Lord would dance in ecstasy practically the whole night and there would be a Dwaita Charya would sometimes sing. And this ecstasy was so amazing that no one could understand it. That's why he would only allow his most intimate disciples to be part of that kirtan. Um, one time, one young boy, he was a simple brahmachari. He was a tapasya. He performed great austerities and penances. And he lived only on drinking milk. Mm -hmm. He heard about Lord Chaitanya's kirtans and wanted to be a part of that. So he came the evening before and he asked Srivas if he could come in. And of course, Srivas said, this, these kirtans are only for the most elevated persons in Krishna consciousness, but I can see you're very austere and you're very humble. So I think we can arrange for you to come, but you must not allow Lord Chaitanya to see you. So that was agreed. So he came into the house early and hid in an area of the house where he could see the kirtan and then Mukunda began singing very sweetly, melodiously. Lord Chaitanya began to dance, but then within a, less than a minute, Lord Chaitanya stopped. He said to Srivas, called Srivas over, is there someone here that should not be here? My dear Lord, only your disciples, but there is one young man 
And the Lord immediately became quite upset. Then the boy ran out and fell at the feet of Lord Chaitanya. And the uh, Lord Chaitanya said, uh, of course, he could understand the heart of all living entities. He says, do you think that you can get Krishna so easily simply by drinking milk? Krishna is not so cheap. So give up all your false austerities. And then, of course, after reprimanding the boy, and then the boy turned around and left. He was very quiet, accepted the chastisement. And as he was walking out, he was thinking, hmm, you know, the Lord is very kind. I did get to see his dancing for a little while. And then Lord Chaitanya being the indwelling super soul in the hearts of all living beings, said to the boy, called him back. And then the boy fell at the Lord's feet. Again, the Lord repeated his instructions to the boy. And then the boy, because he was very humble and he accepted the chastisement without complaining and actually he felt like he deserved it. Because of that quality, it attracted the Lord. So this is a very significant point that uh, one who is by nature humble or who one who regularly practices the principles of humility, um, that qualification alone attracts Krishna. Even if one has no other qualification, either material or otherwise, if they're humble, then the Lord will show them much favor. Because the general principle of the living entity in the material world is that the living entity falls into this material world because of pride, because of envy. Envy because in the spiritual world, Krishna is the only center and the living entities center around Krishna and they're happy. But sometimes one may think, well, why should Krishna be the center? Why not me? That mentality uh, disqualifies one to, to remain in the spiritual world. And then the living entity falls to the material world. So as Prabhupada explained in many of his lectures, the original sin is enviousness of the Lord. And once we come into the material world, that element or that, that quality of enviousness uh, plays itself out and everyone is envious of everybody else. <laughs> so that envy started with our enviousness of the Lord and here we are in the material world <clears throat> and we're doing the same thing. So if one is humble, that means they're on their way back to Godhead. And so the Lord saw that in that young boy and he welcomed him to become to stay into the kirtan and actually he joined Lord Shaitanya's disciples. The walk he said became one of his followers. It was another pastime where <laughs> Sri Vastakur's mother-in-law, she was also of the same mind and she wanted to see Lord Chaitanya's dancing. So she hid behind this very large earthen pot, which is sometimes you see those big gigantic pots that they have in India. They're as big, bigger, bigger than a person. And uh, you can, they're, they're usually made out of some type of metal and you can hide behind them. So she was hiding behind them and trying to watch Lord Chaitanya's dancing. Again, the Lord began and again, he stopped after a few moments and again called for Srivas. And Srivas said, no, my dear Lord, Durant, as far as I know, it's just your devotees. <clears throat> so the Lord began his kirtan again. And after a few moments, again, he stopped again. He said, 
I can tell there's someone in this house that should not be here. So they went looking and behind the earthen pot, Srivas discovered his mother-in-law. And so the rest of the pastime is the mother-in-law was escorted outside <laughs> and could not stay into the kirtan. <laughs> So you might think, well, is Lord Chaitanya being unfair? Well, because in those moods in the house of Srivas, there was such intimacy and such ecstatic feelings of love that people who weren't on that platform would, could easily find fault or could not appreciate, or because their, their spiritual adhikari was not strong, then they will also cause the atmosphere to go down. So we see that in kirtan sometimes. When devotees are in kirtan, the idea is that everyone sings and everyone hears nicely with all their effort. One should hear with rapt attention and one should sing with good energy and enthusiasm. And that will build the kirtan quickly. And then once it builds, it'll stay and then continue to expand in its happiness. But if devotees are sitting in the kirtan and they're not participating, if they're talking or if they're just uh, thinking about something else while the kirtan's going on, that brings the energy down. So it's a collective consciousness that works in kirtan. So that's why one of the, that's the main reason why Lord Chaitanya didn't want anyone, but only the highest devotees to be part of that kirtan. <laughs> so then at another time, again, in the house of Srivas Thakur, um, uh, Srivas Thakur's youngest son, he was about four years old, he had come down with rheumatic fever and the boy was quite sick. So during the kirtan, just at the beginning of the kirtan, the boy actually left his body. And he was laying in the bedroom a distance away in another section of the house. And the relatives had come and they were mourning over the loss of their relative. And, uh, but Sri Bastakor, he knew what had happened. And even though they informed him that his son had died, he was more concerned of not disturbing Lord Chaitanya's kirtan. So he told them not to make a display of this and remain quiet. So they tried and the Lord continued. So seven and a half hour, hours later, Lord Chaitanya calls Srivas Thakur and says, Srivas, I have a feeling there's some calamity that happened in this house tonight. Srivas said, how is that possible, my Lord? Wherever you are, everything is auspicious. But since you asked, Yes, my, uh, my youngest son, he died earlier this evening. Oh, really? The Lord responded. Why didn't you tell me? Well, I didn't want to disturb your kirtan. Let us go. So they went to the room where the boy was laying. The relatives were there, still grieving. But Chaitanya went right up to the boy, put his hand on the chest of the boy and said, my dear son of Srivas, where have you gone? Why have you left? The boy sat up and he said, my dear Lord, according to your will, my time in this body is over. And according to your will, I'm going on to my next destination. And then the boy lay down and again was gone. <laughs> so the Lord did that to help people understand that we are not this body. 
we are the soul within the body. And the body is temporary, the soul is eternal, the soul is part of Krishna. The soul always is in the a situation where there is no calamities, but the body is subject to so many problems and ultimately death. So after seeing that, the relatives became sober. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was so pleased with uh, Sri Vastakur, how he had want, not wanted to disturb the Lord's kirtan and simply um, didn't want to make any announcement that his son has died. So the Lord was very pleased. So the Lord arranged for the body to be taken down by the Ganga. And then the last rites were performed. Ganga Puja was there. And uh, the Lord did the whole ceremony himself. He conducted it just to show his affection, his love for Sri Vastakorn. And then the Lord said one thing. He said, how could I ever leave such a person as Sri Vastakur. And then the devotees were thinking, what is he saying? How could he ever leave? What does he mean by that? But that was the first of five different indications that were done indirectly to make known that the Lord was actually planning to leave the association of his devotees and take to the renounced order of life and go to Vrindavan. The second time was one of those persons who wanted to come in and see the kirtan. He, uh, he was unhappy with Lord Chaitanya. So he was down at the bank, bank of the river and Lord Chaitanya was passing by. So he approached the Lord and he said, you know, I'm a Brahmana and I follow all Brahminical qualities. You know, you didn't allow me to come in to your program. I was very much insulted by that. The Lord didn't say anything. And then the Brahmin took his Brahmin thread out and pronounced a curse, because Brahmins do that. They take out their thread and then they pronounce a curse and they do it on their thread. So he said, I curse you that you will never in this life enjoy material happiness. And when Lord Chaitanya heard that, he said, thank you very much. You have given me a wonderful blessing. And then he left. <laughs> and then the Brahmin thought, what did I say? What did I do? What happened? <laughs> he couldn't figure it out. And that was the second indication that Lord Chaitanya would leave and take sannyas. You will not be able to enjoy material happiness. And Lord Chaitanya considered that a benediction. <laughs> There was another person, his name was Gopal Chapala. Gopala Chapala was a worship of Durga Devi. He lived really, really close to Sri Bhastakur's house. And so he was somewhat envious. He wasn't allowed into the kirtans either. So he made a plot to defame the reputation of Sri Bhastakur. So in the evening, one night, after everyone had taken rest, he came to Lord uh, Sri Thakur's door and he placed in front of the door a red rose, a bottle of wine, and paraphernalia for worshiping Durga Devi. The idea was that when people would see it, they would think, oh, he is not a worshiper of Krishna. So when uh, Sri Bhastakura came out the next morning, 
he saw the items that were placed for worship of Durga Devi on his doorstep. And immediately he called the people in the local area and said, look, this is what I do. Now you know my real, and of course, no one really believed him, but this was his natural humility. He didn't want to uh, act differently. And so when that news got back to the devotees, they were all unhappy. But Gopala Chapala later on got a very severe case of leprosy because of his offense to Lord Chaitanya. I'm to, I mean, to Sri Thakur. And he had to leave the association of the local people and live on the banks of the Ganges. So after some time, a few months, Lord Chaitanya was walking by in that area and that same Gopala Chapala, he ran up to Lord Chaitanya and he said, my dear Lord, you know, I'm suffering so much from this leprosy. Please save me, help me. The Lord said, what you're suffering now is nothing what, are, what you're about to receive. You will suffer many, many lives for your offense to Sri Thakur." And the Lord turned around and immediately left. Gopal Chapala was devastated and he continued to suffer. After about six months, the Lord again passed that area and Gopal Chapala again fell at the feet of the Lord. This time he was more humble than before. And the Lord said, if you want to get relieved from your suffering, then you have to get the blessings of Sri Thakur. Otherwise, you will continue in, a, in your circumstance. And so, Gopala Chapala went to the Sri Thakur and fell at his feet. He apologized. And he was so sincerely humble, sincerely apologetic, praying for the mercy. And uh, Sri Thakur, because he's a Vaishnava, a Vaishnava never takes offense when somebody offends them. If someone offends a Vaishnava, the Vaishnava thinks, well, actually, this, I deserve it. Whatever that person is saying is true. <clears throat> or if they don't feel it's true, they, they feel that Krishna's arranging this for my, for my purification. And so Srivas immediately forgave him. And then um, when he did, his leprosy was all gone. And that devotee came back to Srivas and said, I want to take shelter of you and I want you to become my spiritual master. Srivas, of course, said, I think you should go to this other person and he gave a name. I think his name was Vamsi, Vamsi Dari. I think he is your spiritual master. You can go to him. So he did, took shelter of him and became initiated. And his name became Devananda. Uh, and Devananda was a whole different person now. So much so that he would write poems and songs simply glorifying the devotees. His whole life was to serve the devotees and he was not, he became famous for Vaishnav Seva and his prayers to the Vaishnavas, his glorifications to the Vaishnavas, his service to the Vaishnavas is outstanding and was uh, uh, recognized by everyone. It's interesting, some devotees might think, well, you know, I've committed offense, fences before, and I haven't gotten any leprosy. <laughs> Sometimes we might think like that, I offended this person, and I'm, I'm not getting any leprosy. So there is an expl explanation for that. When Lord Chaitanya was personally present, he speeded up the reactions of offenses he speeded up the uh, gifts of devotional service. 
he would give love of God to devotees just simply by glancing on them, they would receive love of God. And other times when they committed offenses, they immediately would get, would get a reaction. So if a devotee thinks, well, I'm not, I, I committed offenses, I'm not getting a reaction, is this actually the way it goes? Yes, because in due course of time, those reactions will come, but they don't come immediately. It was only because of the presence of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that these that the gifts of bhakti and the, the punishment coming from the guru and the Lord was immediate at that time. So that's a nice little pastime. I use some of the few sweet pastimes in the house of Sri Vas Thakur. One time, Lord Chaitanya said to Sri Vas, Sri Vas, you don't work. You don't do anything. How do you live? How do you maintain your family? Srivas responded by clapping his hands three times. The Lord was curious and said, why, what kind of response is that? And he repeated the response. Srivas said, my dear Lord, once, one day, if Lord Krishna doesn't feed me, two days if he doesn't feed me and my family, three days if he doesn't, and immediately I jump into the Ganges and drown myself. When the Lord heard that, he became so ecstatic that he roared in ecstasy, which shook the universe. And he said, Srivas, Srivas, even if Lakshmi, the goddess of fortune has to go from door to door with a begging bowl in order to beg alms. There will always be food in your home. So the Lord was saying, yeah, because Srivas had complete faith. And if you simply engage in devotional service, the Lord takes care of you. Now, sometimes devotees ask about that. Does it work? I, we say, yeah, you don't need to work. You don't need to do anything. The Lord will take care of you and your family. He will provide everything you need. But only if you have that faith. If you don't have that faith, then you'll have to go to work <laughs> to get the money. <laughs> you get the things you need. But if you have that faith and you act on that faith, both are required, then Krishna always takes care of his devotees. Kontiya pratijani hina me bhakta pranashyati. The Lord never forgets his devotees. The devotees become the foremost uh, thought within the mind of the, his, of the Lord. The Lord is always trying to serve his devotees. Sometimes people ask me, should I quit my job? I say, well, if you have that faith, but if you don't, I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> so we have to realize that devotional service is so powerful. And one who engages in devotional service, everything will be taken care of. Now, if one is trying to test the Lord, someone is trying to test the Lord and do that just to see if the Lord will provide, that is also pretense and it will not work. This has to be a genuine form of renunciation in order to increase one's devotional service. It's not to be done simply surreptitiously, uh, you know, whimsically or whatever. It has to be done from the heart as a feature of one's bhakti. And if it is, Krishna will take care of his devotee. I told that story so many times. I think I told it a few times how when the devotees were in need of money for paying the rent on their buildings and the rent was due, they didn't have any money simply by doing kirtan and preaching. And then the money came immediately. 
That's faith. Mm -hmm. There's another story where there was a kirtan by uh, Advaita Acharya. Advaita Acharya was there in the kirtan and all the devotees were chanting and dancing. Lord Chaitanya was not there. And, uh, and then Advaita Acharya knew Lord Chaitanya was coming. So he started to tell the devotees, chant Goranga, <laughs> Goranga, 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 Jai Sachinandana, chant the names of Lord Chaitanya. So they started to do that, but they were a little reluctant because they knew how much Lord Chaitanya didn't like that. He wanted them to chant only Krishna's name. But Advaita was so forceful and so determined that the devotees followed it. And then Lord Chaitanya, from a distance, he could hear the kirtan and he said, oh, the devotees are having kirtan. So he started to come closer. But as, as he was getting closer, he, he could recognize, what are they chanting? Why are they not chanting Krishna's name? So when he got close, he stopped and he could hear they were chanting his name. And when Advaita Charya saw Lord Chaitanya, he told the devotees, chant louder, chant with more enthusiasm. He kept encouraging the devotees to chant and the, chant, the devotees didn't know what to do. They were trying to follow Advaita, but at the same time, they knew Lord Chaitanya wasn't happy about it. So finally, Lord Chaitanya just turned around and left. And when he, he went back to his room and he went down and he, he lay down and fell asleep for a little while. When he woke up, Sri Thakur was there. Sri Thakur was greeted the Lord. And Lord Chaitanya was still thoughtful about what happened. And he said to uh, Sri why don't the devotees chant Krishna's name? Why are they chanting something else? Why are they not chanting Krishna's name? And Srivast, he took his hand and raised it high over his head, holding his palm in the direction of the sun. And that was his response. So Sri Taitani Mahaprabhu said, what are you doing, Srivast? And Srivast said, I'm covering the sun with my hand. Covering the sun with your hand, you can't, you can't do that. It's not possible. Yeah, yes, I know it's not possible. Therefore, it is not possible to, for you to hide from us. So Srivas just revealed how the devotees felt. That, yes, we cannot help but worship you as who you really are. So that's a beautiful pastime. And how the Lord never wanted to be glorified, but the devotees in their heart of hearts always wanted to glorify the Lord. Okay, so these are a few of the pastimes that we can focus on for today. So we'll stop here and uh, see if anyone would like to respond, add something, <clears throat> ask a question. <laughs> Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Sorry, there was some problem at my end. Uh, so many thanks for sharing glorious pastimes. Um, I think lots of learning uh, from this today's session. Like we need to really focus on being humble. Uh, firm, unflinching faith um, in Krishna, even there are material challenges, a very important learning and also taking extra care of not offending any devotee. Uh, in fact, like you mentioned, Mahaprakash Lila, we should be careful to not offend even any living entity, but devotee, I think we should be extra careful. So thank you very, very much, uh, Guru Maharaj, for sharing all this. And uh, Hare Krishna, dear devotees, if you have any questions, or any comments, please uh, unmute yourself. Or if you want me to read, then you can type it in chat window. Thank you.
हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण Dear Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Sri La Prabhupada. All glories to Guru Dev. Guru Maharaj, this was such a beautiful lecture, and every minute I was just absorbed in hearing this beautiful narration of the Lord's pastimes. I was especially struck by how having faith makes the whole difference in the process of bhakti. And I was remembering in one lecture how you said. that you had instructed one of my god sisters she had a, a son who was a little dependent on her and you had instructed her don't worry about the job you just engage in devotional service and she was really aghast at first she was how can i give up my job this son is uh, a little disabled dependent i need but she followed your instruction and later on she told me I don't know how it is. I don't have a job, but everything is going on very nicely. No problems. So that was a very beautiful example of her faith, her surrender, her devotion, and your mercy on her. So thank you very much. <laughs> If you have that faith, it works. If you don't have the faith, then you might find because of lack of faith. And things are different. It depends on full faith in the Lord. Hare Krishna Maharaj please accept my humble obeisances all glory to Shri Prabhupada all glories to you Maharaj Hare Krishna thank you for the wonderful lecture Maharaj i i just want to share one comment uh, which i never thought before about uh, your comment about why are we getting leprosy because <laughs> uh, because when we read uh, in uh, when i was reading in chaitanya charitamrita there are many instances where there was several reactions would come instantly uh to offenders and uh, so your explanation has been very very uh ref- well yeah that's interesting but also uh, uh a different perspective because yes the mercy was coming uh unrestricted and freely so as the reactions if there was a violation of offense oh i'm sorry i somehow got diverted for attention for a second here what could you repeat that no maharaj i was i was just reiterating uh, that it was quite refreshing uh, uh, insight that the mercy uh, when mahaprabhu was there was coming unrestricted but also with that the reactions were also coming <laughs> quickly as well so which is a yeah, very was, uh, wonderful insight a special feature of lord chaitanya's presence personal presence you know everything works in the same way but it, it, it's not as immediate many times lord chaitanya just bless someone with love of god and they had received love of god thank you for pointing that finer points on thank you maharaj thank you hari krishna guru maharaj i have one question uh, you might have faced this question earlier also and you actually answered this but this question still remains in my mind not very clear so i thought i will ask this you mentioned that uh, when a living entity or like the soul was having some kind of envious ness in the nature they fought, fell down from the spiritual world to material world but how come there can be any envious ness in spiritual world because in spiritual world there is like it's free from all these kind of things so you still have your independence when you're in the spiritual world but because they you know 
it's you have to understand it's only very small number of living entities in proportion to the amount of living entities actually leave the spiritual world but that independence is never lost doesn't mean because you go to the spiritual world you, your independence is gone Prabhupada really Basically, that's the only thing he ever said in relationship to our falling into the material world. It comes from being envious of Krishna. So, Guru Maharaj, like in, I think, Bhagavad Gita, it's mentioned that whoever has reached to a spiritual planet will never fall down. That's like Krishna mentioning. So that means there is still little possibility, even very rare, but still little possibility of possibility is there. Yeah, what that's for those who are who are coming back. He says, those who yeah, and those who come back to my don't come back to the material world again, because they have they have achieved the highest destiny. In other words, they have had the experience. When you get back to the spiritual world, you remember everything of your sojourn in the material world, and you won't want to go back. And sometimes Prabhupada, there's one time he did give a, an interesting statement, which is quite remote. You have to do some research on it, but I had heard it, where uh, Prabhupada tried to describe how the living entity falls down from the spiritual world. And this was a little bit different. And it's, a, it's more like a principle of nature or a principle of a per, person's personality. He said, Prabhupada well, used an example simply to bring out this point. And he says, you're walking along the street and you pass by a movie theater. And you see the marquee, the advertisement on the outside for the type of movie that is being played. And so it is a horror movie, a movie where you become fearful and scared. But, and you know, if I go to see the movie, this is what will happen. But because of curiosity, you go in. Papa said, sometimes we fall down out of curiosity. What is it, what is it like in the material world? But generally, he didn't answer the question so completely. He said, you'll know everything when you get back. Mm -hmm. And that's what we can take. We shouldn't worry about it, how we got here. We should think about how to get out of there. <laughs> well, if I about use the example, a man is drowning and someone comes along with a boat to save him. He says, "Get in the boat." He says, "I'm not getting in a boat until I find out how you know how I how I got how I became drowning like this." <laughs> so yeah, just take the mercy and get out. <laughs> it's not so important how we got here. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. I agree. It's too important. Uh -huh. Hare Krishna. Okay. Anything else? Mm -hmm. Gurudev Hare Krishna. Please Hare accept. Krishna. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to you. Uh, Guru Maharaj, so many nice pastimes. I felt so purifying this morning, very nice start of the day. So thank you so much. And uh, I just wanted to um, um, uh, share something that I read. You were just talking about uh, uh, Vivek Prabhu's question that how we, uh, we, uh, we have our independence and we go back to the spiritual world and then we remember everything and we don't want to come back to this material world. Um, I read in Prabhupada's purport that uh, um, like how we feel um, a hog is in a very abominable condition. Um, similarly, the 
uh, higher living entities like the demigods they feel same, same thing about us the humans and then even the higher spiritual entities they feel like that about the demigods so when we are at the highest position we feel that everybody is living in a, a very uh, miserable condition so when we have experienced all this then we don't want to go back that was a explanation in prabhupad's purports yeah. um, nice Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was something I wanted to share and um, very nice. I, I had a question about uh, uh, Gopal Chappala. That, that story is very similar to Ambarish Maharaj, um, um, where um, uh, someone gets envious of uh, Lord's devotee and uh, Lord doesn't like it. They, and, and he wants um, that person to go back to the devotee and ask for forgiveness. Um, so um, sometimes we are not aware, even aware that we have committed an aparad. Mm. Sometimes uh, we don't know, like uh, uh, the other person has his, has his own uh, nature. They might take it seriously, they may not. And then we, we might not even know. So what about this um, not known version of Aparaj, where we don't even, we will not even feel that we have committed anything wrong. What to do? Is that the question? Yeah, what what, what to do? Will we still have the reactions? Will we, um, how will we get out of it? Well, there is offenses knowingly and there's offenses unknowingly. Offenses unknowingly are also, there's a reaction to it. Um, generally, sometimes the devotees just pray to the Lord and say, my dear Lord, uh, you know, I've committed so many offenses, so please excuse me. And then they ask for forgiveness. And sometimes in a association with devotees, sometimes a devotee will say, please forgive me if I've committed any offenses. Uh, sometimes that is also done. And the other recourse, I'll tell a little story just to indicate how Krishna works. But the other recourse is that there's an island in uh, Navadweep called Koladweep. And on that island, there is an ashram called Devananda Pandit's ashram. And Devananda Pandit had committed an offense to Sri Thakur, but Lord Chaitanya forgave him when he served uh, Rakreshwar Pandit so nicely. <laughs> and he became humble after realizing his mistake. And so uh, that ashram is considered, I forgot the exact principle that is being uh, expounded here, but the point was that anyone who goes there and who comes to the ashram and prays and uh, that place is the only place in our ISKCON society where you can get relieved from the offense of Vaishnava Parad. So you have to go there, go to the ashram of Devananda Pandit and pray for forgiveness. Um, the, uh, the story that I heard was one of my senior God sisters, she told me this, he said, um, you know, I was chanting my rounds one day and I noticed my rounds were really not good. And, and uh, I couldn't chant. <laughs> then she was, she was starting to reflect, maybe, why is that? And then she, then she remembered, then she thought, oh, maybe I committed some offense. She didn't remember any offense, but maybe she thought, maybe I committed some offense. So she prayed to the Lord, please, if I've committed any offense, please let me know what it was and how I can, uh, you know, get free from that. So the next day, one of her friends called her up and said, you know, this lady here, um, you, you uh, offended her son and she's not so happy about that. So I think you should go and speak to them and maybe apologize. And so immediately Krishna arranged for that lady 
to call this, this, this devotee. And then she went, because she was a school teacher, this, this, uh, devo this god sister of mine. So she was noted to be quite heavy with the students. So this, uh, this particular student wasn't able to take it and it caused him to become unhappy. So it was an offense committed to the boy and the mother also took it personally. So when then she found out, she apologized and then everything was nice. And then she was able to chant nicely again. So this is an example of not knowing, but praying. You can pray, my dear Lord, I, maybe I've committed offenses to so many devotees. I don't, I don't remember, but it's, good, it's a good chance I did. And, one can humble themselves and sincerely pray. And sometimes you may get an answer and other times you may simply get relieved from the reaction. Mm -hmm. So unknowingly, there is a, there's a way. Mm. Yes. Yeah, but if we're, always in, if we're always in a mood of service, then we don't commit offenses so much. Hmm. Guru Maharaj, that ashram you were saying about uh, uh, Devanand Pandit's ashram mm -hmm. is, uh, um, you said it is in Kola Dweep. Yeah. Yeah, one can go there. Kola Dweep is one of the closest islands to Navadweep, so it's just a boat ride across the Ganga mm -hmm. and you're there. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Yeah, yeah. But for the meantime, we can just pray. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Hare Bhagavad. Okay, should we conclude today's session? Yes. Yeah, Guru Maharaj, we are 10 minutes over. So... There are no questions in the chat window also, so. Uh, okay. I do have a question, Guru Maharaj, if I may. I would like to know on this uh, same subject of Vaishnava Prad, because it is so serious and so important for our spiritual life. Sometimes, uh, you know, when devotees offend someone and it is brought to their attention, they get even more offended with the person who brought it to their attention. And they don't really accept that, uh, you know, somewhere along the line, this person was hurt or something. In such a situation, is it better to just keep quiet and not say anything, knowing that person is very sensitive and uh, not bring it up at all? What do you, so you mean, what? What's your involvement in it? I don't understand where, what part you're playing in this. <laughs> Supposing between two Vaishnavas, one has felt very hurt and offended about something. So, by another yeah, what, action, yeah. and know about it. Like in this case, uh, Krishna arranged for this lady to get this information from her friend, and she took it in the right spirit. She she was praying. And, and she was hoping that, you know, Krishna, somebody will give an answer. And so when uh, this lady called up and said, look, uh, you were a little heavy with this student. It may be good if you just go and talk. She took it in the right spirit. But uh, sometimes you know that this person is offended and you do want both of them to make it up or to, to sort it out. But uh, you're afraid that the person who actually offended will get more offended if you try to sort the matter out. Um, how many people are in this, two or three? I can't, I can't figure out, you're watching this from the, uh, uh, from, you're watching this thing from, from a third person or you're one of the people involved? I can't understand. You no, know, it's no longer the situation, it's over now, but I used to often see this uh, in New Taliban, I would see one devotee offending another devotee, and I didn't know what to do, you know. I could see that a 
offenses were happening, but I was just, what am I supposed to do? I'm just a little kid on the new kid on the block, so to speak. And even now I wonder, you know, how we can- Oh, so you, you, you were wondering whether you should say something to the person who offended that other person. Right, because will I be, you know, you just want good relationships. You want everyone to be happy and get along nice. But if you, you might make the situation worse or you might yeah, come you, you could, and you could also be wrong too. You could also think it's offense, but it's not. Mm -hmm. That is, yeah, that is true. That is true. Sometimes we may think that there is something, but between themselves, they might be okay with whatever interactions are happening. Yeah. So then it's not sure. If you're not, if you're not sure, just stay out of it. <laughs> Yes, Guru Maharaj. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. And tomorrow we're doing a program. We're connecting with the devotees from West Africa. So there is a particular link that you can get. Is Lavanya on the line? Maybe she can help facilitate okay. that link. Yeah. Like so you know me. about this? Do you know about this program? Yes, Maharaj. Um, just not to share, Prabhu uh, message me. Uh, I'll post it in the group uh, for all the devotees, Guru Maharaj. Yeah. Yes, so tomorrow it. we'll speak also about Lord Chaitanya to the uh, combined combined groups. Okay. Thank you very much. Keep thank Lord you. Chaitanya's keep Lord Chaitanya focused in your mind as much thank as you. possible. Thank you very much, Guru Maharaj, for this really, really good, uh, valuable time and association. Uh, so thanks, devotee, for joining this session. Shila Prabhupada ki jai, Guru Dev ki jai, Anant Koti Vaishnav Brind ki jai. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj, please accept my